I used to creep away from school and come here and sit and draw. I remember being so overwhelmed by this room. To me, it looked like a palace. And when I found out that this was the original entrance to the V&A, and it was for all people, specifically workers, to come and have food in the museum, I think it's probably the most exciting cafe in the world. <laughs> To me now, the v &A is particularly exciting because I feel like it's an early form of the internet. Rather than looking at these objects that we may never have encountered in life through a screen, we get to see it in real, in front of us. This room is very beautiful. I've sat and had tea here with friends before, and there's something very special about it, that you're, you're sitting in part of maybe William Morris's mind. His viewpoint was that art should be for all. And that, of course, is what the v &A is about. And I like how that's encapsulated in this room. We sit here in the cafe and we're surrounded by this beautiful art. Can we head quick, should we quickly head in here, just very quickly? This is very exciting doing this. Um, <laughs> these photographs by Nicholas Nixon. He photographed a family of women, a group of sisters, one of which he was married to, every year, once a year, over decades. And these are just some of them. But I find them very beautiful and moving because I like seeing the relationship of these women. Obviously, on a sort of practical level, you see their fashions change, but you see the interrelationships change, and you see the women age, and you see how beautiful that is as well. The tenderness, or perhaps my conceived tensions between them. I chose Julia Margaret Cameron, not just because her pictures are beautiful, but because she was one of the first female photographers. People within the photographic community attacked her work. They were really, really critical, mostly actually because of um, her techniques, because right. she was the first photographer to take photographs purposely out of focus. Yes, and doesn't she deliberately leave smudges and scratches on the photographs? Exactly. That was part of her vision exactly. and what she wanted. Seeing the roughness of them, the organic nature of them. Behind Tennyson, there's that backdrop which isn't perfectly arranged, his bow tie isn't perfectly tied. It's the classicism, but with the imperfections that make it so alive and beautiful to me. There's a zip at the back, I never realised. Obviously, that's how they put it on. These particular costumes represented to me a time in the, in the 80s where Lee Barry was a, was a very shocking person, personality. And he was about the cult of artifice and subverting that. And when I first heard that he had worked with Michael Clark, this classically trained, incredibly gifted dancer and choreographer, and my mind uh, couldn't contend with the fact that this avant-garde, underground sort of artist worked with someone that was a classical dancer. But also what I love about Michael Clark was that he has that rigour of discipline, of training, but married with an unconventionality and imagination that makes him particularly unique. And he uses rock music and he works with people like uh, the, with the band Wire and uh, Relax Muscle, Jarvis Cocker's project. And his performances are incredibly arresting, exciting, feel modern and fresh. Michael Clark has said that he always wanted to work with people that, who he found challenging and challenged him and stretched him and people that had ideas. And Lee Bowery, I feel, certainly, certainly had 
some phenomenal ideas. Many of these items I had only seen in magazines. The first time I came to the exhibition, I was, it was the first time I'd seen really a lot, maybe all of them. It seemed to be a world of fantasy and danger, empowerment, beauty, excitement. It, it seemed to encapsulate so many emotions, but in a garment. And the idea that that kind of work of art that you could wear and you could have a direct uh, physical relationship with was really exciting to me. And one of the reasons why I became so, so interested in, in McQueen and his work and so excited whenever there was a show to see what that show might be like. Shalom Harlow walked out wearing this dress and stopped at the end of the catwalk and these two machines came out of the floor and they started this balletic dance that seemed very graceful and, and then the dance seems to intensify and it seems to become aggressive and she responds to that and, and becomes vulnerable and um, then they spray this mixture of, of it's black paint and acid yellow paint all over the dress and then she walks out and offers herself up to the audience and it was almost sexual it was like an act of creation um, I was blown away by it I was blown away that that this is something that you could do with clothes I like to come to the V&A and just get lost. I remember going into the cast court and being overwhelmed by the objects in there, their scale, and that incredible reproduction of the column that's in two sections. The idea that that would have been one on top of the other and it was separated. The original column is now in inferior condition to this cast. So, this cast becomes valuable in its own way as well. And I think that idea of artifice, what is real, what is not real, echoes all over v &A. I find my ideas about what things are constantly being challenged. Like in the McQueen exhibition, what, what is a dress? What is a fashion show? What is a cafe? Can we get it down? No, I know we can't. Can I try it on? I know I can't.